Welcome to the Nightclub, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. I've been getting a lot of comments about tack welding and how to do it and what's the proper way to do it and how to do it with different materials. So I decided to go ahead and make a whole video so you guys can reference this whenever you guys are doing your own projects. So typically the ideal way you want to tack two things together is if you go ahead and butt them up against each other, pick a spot in between them, pull the trigger and zap it together and it ends up looking something like this. And there you go, it's tack welded together. There's a little bit of penetration on the opposite side and it's not gonna go anywhere, it's good to go. You can go ahead and try to bend it and it's not gonna go anywhere. The problem isn't really welding the thick material, it's really when you're going and welding thin material, like let's say you're welding body panels, let's say you're welding a patch panel. The, there's a couple different ways you can go ahead and do it. My favorite way to do it is actually to do a What's called a lap weld is where you overlap the metal. You go ahead and we'll pick a spot in between them right here. Instead of doing the traditional butt weld, you go ahead and lap, overlap one over the other. So typically when you're doing a repair and you're gonna put in a patch panel, you guys can go ahead and let's say this is the existing body panel. You can put in the new piece of metal behind it just a little bit. And then when you go ahead and do your tack weld, it becomes a lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a butt weld right here on this piece of metal just so I can demonstrate. And we have the number one problem that you guys deal with and that is burn through. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but I've actually burnt a hole right through this. And if we go ahead and break it, you guys can see where the hole is clearly right here. And that's because when you're butt welding them together, the edge actually gets really thin. And when you're welding two pieces of metal together, if you don't have the settings dialed in, for example, right now, I have the heat turned up a little bit high, not too high, but hot enough to just go through the sheet metal. So the ideal way to do this is when you're welding sheet metal and you're lap welding sheet metal, the ideal thing to do is instead of just picking a spot and going for it like we did with the heavier material, you're gonna wanna start at one material and then cross it to the other material and then you're gonna bring it back to this material and that'll essentially do like a loop and it'll tie the two pieces of metal together. Now, I'm explaining this in several steps but really this shouldn't take more than a second. If you guys go ahead and lay on it no matter what kind of settings you have on your machine, you're gonna burn through this material. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the settings all the way down so I can demonstrate this technique. Before I continue, I'm actually going to go ahead and spray this down with anti-spatter spray. I spent a couple minutes cleaning off this piece of steel just so I can use it as a ground table. I don't actually have a welding table yet, so I just use whatever I can find. And in order to keep it clean, just spray a little bit of an anti-spatter spray, and that'll keep everything nice and clean. It's pretty essential, especially when you're welding flux core. Uh, it, keeps, it helps keep all the spatter down, and it helps uh, you clean up the metal so it doesn't look like you're welding with flux core even though you actually are. All right, so let's go ahead and try this again. This time I'm actually gonna go, uh, I'm gonna start on one material, move it to the other one and bring it back to see if I can get it to tie. And as you guys can see, because the heat was down, I was able to control it a little bit better I've got penetration all the way through. It did not burn through this time. If I go to do bend it, you can see that the weld does not break. And in fact, if you keep going, the metal breaks, which means that the weld is actually stronger than the metal. And that means you've welded this successfully. Now, butt welding is not necessarily my favorite type of weld. I actually prefer lap welding. And that's actually where you take your metal and you overlap it like this, especially when you're doing body work. So let's go ahead and put it like this and we're gonna do a very similar technique. The plus side of doing lap weld instead of butt welds is because you're gonna be focusing on the top layer and bringing it down. Because the top layer is supported, there it's much less likely that you're actually gonna burn through, even with more than normal amount of heat. So for beginners, lap welds actually work really well. So let's go ahead and do a lap weld right now.
So we got a nice little lap weld here. We've got penetration. You can't see it because of the paint, but it is bubbled up right there. It is a darker spot that tells you that there's penetration. And if we try to bend it, there you go. If you were to, we actually cut out the piece of metal, you can actually see all the way through. You see a little bit of daylight through this hole right here, which means we had proper penetration as well. This next weld I'm gonna show you guys is very similar to the lap weld, only this is a little bit more popular in auto body when it comes to installing new panels. So as you guys can see right here, I've got a quarter inch hole drilled out right there. And typically when you install, when you're installing new panels like pinch welds and stuff, you have an overlapping panel like this, but instead of doing the lap weld here on the end, you actually do the lap weld through this hole. This is actually what people like to refer to when they talk about spot welds is filling this hole right here or cutting out this hole right here. And that's what they mean when they're talking about spot welds. The trick to this particular one is that you're actually gonna start at the layer that's on the bottom. You're gonna build it up. Once you build it up enough, you're actually gonna go around this hole and tie into the edge of this and that's what's gonna actually hold it together. So let me go ahead and demonstrate what I'm talking about here. So it was quick, it was easy. You start on the bottom, as you guys can see right here. I have penetration right there, all the way through. And I just went ahead and I turned it and I spun it around until I got it to weld. If I go ahead and try to break this, just like the other ones, I'm gonna have very little luck trying to go ahead and break this. This is actually one of the stronger welds because the only way to break this, because you have so much material going overlapping, you're overlapping here, it's very difficult to actually go ahead and break this weld. This is why it's so popular in auto body work. As you guys can see, I'm just going through and bending this and this weld is just not breaking. You guys can see the clear penetration right here. Profile wise, this weld is actually really, really flat. You guys can barely see it at all, which is a huge reason why it's so popular and so versatile. And the last tack weld we're gonna do is actually going to be a fillet weld. So that is when two pieces of metal meet each other uh, perpendicular, so one's going up, one's laying down, and you're gonna hit it right on the corner. Fillet weld's actually probably the easiest weld to do, and that's because Everything's being supported. This is being supported by the bottom. The bottom is being supported all the way across. Uh, unlike welding it to the edge where it's a pretty loose surface and you're gonna probably burn through, when you go ahead and weld it in the middle of something, the metal here is actually supported by, all the, by everything around it. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it right here and do a tack weld. All right, so as you guys can see, we got penetration. We went ahead and burned through. We have a su successful weld. We have penetration out through the back as well. And if we try to bend it, we're probably gonna break the metal. And it does pass the bend test, as you guys can see. So tack welds are actually still very, very strong, provided that you weld them properly. Uh, I can't even really break it. The weld's not breaking, it's all it's all in the steel. So when you're doing tack welds, you gotta remember that on thin metal, you gotta keep moving. You kinda gotta keep moving left and right, and you can't necessarily rely on your welder settings to help you weld this. And there's just too many variables with thin metal, so nine times out of 10, you're gonna wanna keep moving. Even if it's a simple lap joint or fillet weld, you always wanna keep moving. You wanna make sure you're not in one place for too long. So the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do a butt weld. And this is probably what you guys are most interested in. And I'm going to go ahead and weld all the way across.
All right. So as you guys can see, that was a butt weld. I welded it all the way across. You guys can see a little bit of penetration right there. If I go ahead and try to bend it, the whole material actually bends, which means we had a successful weld here. It's really, really strong. If you guys were to do a repair like this, you would have no problem. So as you guys could see, when I was welding it, you saw that I welded the ends first to hold it in place. Then I held it in the middle to keep it from warping. Then I divided it up into two more sections. And then I just went and I started doing, uh, I started the tack and then dragged it, then stopped. Dra start the tack again, dragged it, then stopped. Start the tack again. And what you're doing is you're getting it to flow, you're pulling the, the weld, and then you're stopping, you're letting the heat cool down. Through your helmet, you can tell where the metal's molten. And as soon as it start, starts uh, cooling off where it's not red anymore through your helmet, you can go ahead and start it back up. Flux core inherently doesn't look the best but I can guarantee you it is a strong weld. I only welded it on one side and I have perfect strength all the way across. Uh, I can't even bend it, which is always a plus. Uh, you wanna make sure your joints are nice and strong. So every time you guys do your tack weld, as long as you guys don't use too much heat and you keep it moving, you should be able to tack weld any kind of material. So if you keep getting problems with burning through, try to move faster, try to turn the heat down. If you can't turn the heat down any lower, try to move faster and try not to keep your finger too long on the trigger. That's all for today. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.